So how's the food this evening? Good? Uh, I'll tell you now, since I've heard some good compliments, I was going to say, if, if you like, if you like the, the turkey, there's a group of men you can thank. If you don't like it, you can blame me. But Jim Fitzgerald, who was baptized two Sundays ago, um, he volunteered his deep pit. He's got a six-foot deep, deep pit, three feet around. And we threw 13 turkeys in that thing, a uh, group of men, and uh, took them out this week and took them apart and the rest. And so glad that that came out well. Uh, and sev several of you stepped in to do several other things. Blair had his own team doing the ham tonight. And there's just such a great spread tonight. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, you had a team. At uh, Jim's house, we also, he also threw some moose in there, and so I got to have moose this week for the first time. Maybe next year we'll, we'll have uh, m a moose harvest dinner. It, it was pretty good, I got to say. <laughs> now, uh, for the rest of the evening, we want to spend our attention now focusing on uh, the ways that God is at work amongst us, both inside of our church and in our church families. So uh, I'm going to call uh, Cindy Tajirian up, and she's going to share uh, from our women's ministry. Um, you all know that the women's ministry, uh, the current women's ministry team has decided to step back uh, in an effort to uh, hand off the baton to the next generation of women. And it's without a question that our women's ministry has been used by God to give great encouragement to the women of our church uh, and to our community. Uh, they hosted the largest Bible studies in our church for years. They've taken many women to retreat every, every year. They've held women's ministry auctions and raised thousands of dollars every year uh, for further ministry to women. And they've done all of this and more with great skill and creativity and enthusiasm and, and uh, a tireless effort. And we are very grateful for the service that they've rendered over the years. And uh, Cindy has been gracious enough to come and share a little bit with us. So, Cindy. Right there? Yeah. Uh, this evening, I'm going to give you a historical look at women's ministries. And I'm going to begin by reading our key verse in our mission statement. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be the same mind with one another according to Jesus Christ, that with one accord you may in one voice glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept one another just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. Romans 15, 5 through 6. Our mission for women's ministries at Dinuba First Baptist Church is to provide opportunities to grow closer to the Lord through studying and obeying his word, enjoying the fellowship with one another, and reaching out to the women in our communities. Perhaps you're curious on how women's ministries got started. Janice Moore, John Moore's mother, um, had a team of selfless, energetic women who began this ministry. Under her leadership, Mother's Day teas, luncheons, and top-notch guest speakers, and Pat Dahlgren's team providing meals. Uh, Janice in uh, encouraged ladies from our church to invite a relative, friend, or neighbor to all of our events. She always wanted whomever attended to hear the word of God with the goal of their salvation, and that goal continued. After Janice, Peggy Garispi was elected our new leader, and we added a communication position to the committee's officers in order to get the word out about our events. Just as Janice, Peggy wanted women outside of our church to be included. We continued with the Mother's Day luncheons with guest speakers who would often speak on Sunday morning as the invitation of Pastor Tom. Under Peggy's leadership and vision, we started performing staged melodramas to provide an outlet for the women to showcase their acting talent or lack thereof. These included a celebrity whodunit where the women took on personas of a celebrity from John Wayne, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, Marilyn Monroe, Bob Marley, 
and Groucho Marx and many others. It was hilarious. We also presented another dinner mi murder mystery. Our stage consisted of fruit bins being turned upside down. The cast had to be careful not to step in the cracks. The cast was made up of a variety of women from our church who had very little acting experience, but had a blast getting to know each other and entertaining the audience. The message of the gospel was presented at the end of each performance. Peggy's family moved to Visalia, and we were in need of a new leader. A shopping trip had been planned to the Camarilla outlets, and the bus was packed with excited shoppers. Unfortunately, just as we arrived, the charter bus broke down. Carol Turner happened to be on that trip, and her name had been coming up as a possible leader. Debbie Petnick and I approached Carol, and to hear Carol turn it, we cornered her on that broken down bus and made it clear that she should be the next women's ministries leader. Carol wanted to submit the decision to prayer, and she finally said yes. She was our new director of women's ministries and held that position for 15 years. She had a creative mind and a heart for women. Under her leadership, women's ministries became one of the most active ministries in our church. The ever popular Christmas event known as Shebrews was begun the first Sunday afternoon in December with many women and guests attending. This event has continued. Over 30 Bible studies were provided to our women in the morning and evening at least twice each year. Some of the authors were Beth Moore, Priscilla Shire, Kelly Minter, Jen Wilkin, Lisa Harper, Jennifer Rothschild, Margaret Feinberg, and many other well-known authors and Bible scholars. The first few years, Carol ordered 70 books at no cost to the ladies. In the last few years, 40 were purchased. Under Carol's leadership, four plays were presented completely sold out to crowds for over two nights. We now had a real stage, professional lighting, wireless sound system, and video recording. Wow, those were some of the most memorable events and inspirational performances that had the audience in tears uh, stir from stirring moments from Cindy Fox's scene and hilarious outcomes when Mary Carter played three different characters all in the same play. Many of our former castmates are celebrating eternity in heaven. They are fondly remembered and greatly missed. A real talent show, cooking demonstration, bunko, movie nights, game night, and other events were organized by Carol and her team. Other speakers were Kathy Lipp, who headlined a spa day luncheon, and Carol Wolliford, who presented the gospel from the dramatic viewpoint of a master potter. Another event was a bridal showcase directed by Helen Peretti's, and the models wore wedding dresses uh, from different eras from ladies in our church. Laura Fodrell and Laura Haston also brought inspirational messages to our teas. Each January, Converge Pack West held a women's conference at the Hyatt Regency in Monterey. The cost to attend was out of reach for most ladies, so a variety of fundraisers took place all year long to help as many women as possible go to a reduced rate. Carol enlisted many of you to provide scholarships uh, for our women. Mary Ann Regeer was the register for many retreats before Carol added that to her task uh, to her job, and then Ann Herrick became the new director. There was anywhere from three women at the beginning to 40 women attending retreat in Monterey. We had more women than some of the big churches in the Bay Area. The auction, the major fundraiser of the year, which many people attended and purchased donated items with George Fisher as our live auctioneer with his wife Sue as his assistant. They did an amazing job. When Carol decided to retire, Ann Herrick became our new director. We had Laugh Your Socks Off, Comedy Night with a professional comedian, Georgia Kelly, the daughter of Kathleen Kelly. 
Those in attendance brought 100 pair of socks to donate to the Open Gate House in Dinuba. Bible studies, spring tea, bunko movie nights, and shebrews continued. <clears throat> Many people helped make these events happen, and we want uh, them to be thanked. Please forgive us if we have forgotten someone. Pastor Tom for um, taking on our idea and supporting us, and also Pastor Rick. The deacons for the generous budget and the deaconesses for their guidance. Pat Dahlgren and her kitchen crew for the meals and desserts. Doug and Mary Ann Regeer for the stage sets and decorations. Richard Klippenstein for the filming of our plays and recording his laughter in the background. Dwight and Carol Turner for costume and set design and for their tireless energy and amazing creativity. Lee Rumbabaka and Barry Kennerly as sound technicians and Don Applegate as our acting coach. Jessica for decorating the Christmas tree in the social hall and for printing our programs out. All those who helped decorate the fellowship hall for our events and hosting tables for our guests. Special music has been from Florence Wilson, Maddie Tuttle, Mary Carter, Laura Fadrell, and the girls. A very special thanks to the women who served on the Women's Committee over the years. If you have a heart to minister to women and you have an idea of something that you would like to see here at our church, please let Pastor Rick know and then do it. You don't need a Women's Ministries Committee, just an idea and a heart for our Lord and willingness to serve. For example, Jessica Salazar has taken the future Bunko Nights, and Yvonne Ayers um, has taken on She Brews with her own twist, and it's going to be the first Saturday in December. Um, if you're willing to help, there are sign-up sheets in our message center. Thank you all for your support of Women's Ministries these past years. It's truly been a blessing. Thank you very much, Cindy, and thank you, women's team. Well, next up, we have some uh, special music. Uh, Florence uh, Wilson is going to uh, do a special song for us that helps us to reflect on the goodness of God. Uh, before she does, though, a little humor for us. Uh, if everything seems to be going well, you've obviously overlooked something. If life gives you melons, you may be dyslexic. <laughs> Think about it for a second. Okay, last one. I probably should have ran this one by my wife first, but I'm going to say it anyway. Laughter is the best medicine, unless you've had multiple children. <laughs> Florence. There you are. You know, I would like to say that um, this morning, Pastor Rick's sermon about in Job, I was reading forward and I realized that, not realized, but I was reading and I said, wow, Job was restored. He was restored beyond what was taken from him. And right now, I feel like this is such a good time of just reflecting and realizing that we all go through our things, you know, through the, through the year. But this is such a, such a great time to realize that God restores and he gives, and he is good, and he is faithful. And so with a, thanks, with a thankful heart, um, I would like to share this song with you.
I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have held me through the fire darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my Amen. That was excellent. Well, uh, next up, this year has marked uh, 50 years that our church has been involved with Awana ministry. And so we wanted to celebrate that this year, and we've done that in a few different ways. But tonight, we wanted to give uh, Chris Methvin, our children's director, uh, a chance to tell us a little bit more about our Awana ministry and, and some of the things happening even just this year. 
And then she's also asked uh, Ernie Chavaria, one of our uh, new leaders, not new to our church, but new leaders in the ministry to share a few stories himself. So as Chris comes up, uh, a couple jokes for the kids, a couple dad jokes maybe. What did uh, Yoda say when he saw himself for the first time in high definition? HDMI? <laughs> One more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I shouted angrily at a couple sparrows sitting on my garden fence, and they both immediately fell over and died. I didn't know that you could, t you could kill two birds with one stone. Okay, so I promised Pastor Rick that I would be short, sweet, and to the point because we are saving the best for our wonderful speaker, Ernie. He's going to truly highlight what children's ministry is doing. But, as many of you know, because most of you are here, we celebrated our 50th year in Awana this year. When I took over the position as children's director, we were going through boxes and actually came across our Awana charter. So now in our Awana office, we have our plaque. 1973, Calvary Baptist Church started Awanas, and when the churches merged, Awanas came over. And I will say that Awana has been a huge blessing to this church, but also that the many volunteers it takes to make Awanas happy, happen has been a blessing to the children in our community and within our church. Both of my children grew up in our Awana program. They <clears throat> developed a steady foundation because of those verses memorized. And I think it's amazing because Awana's focus is to <coughs> present the gospel to children and then to train them to carry on and to lead others to Christ. And for 50 years, that's what our leaders have been doing. They've been instilling time and energy through prayer, through verse recitation and practice with those kids. God has been using so many people in our church to do wonderful things. And over the 50 years, hundreds of children have come to Christ. In fact, the reason Michaela is up here is because less than a month ago, Michaela is our most recent Awana student who has placed her faith and trust in Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you to continue to pray, to continue to encourage our children, and for those who have served and who are currently serving, understand that you are a blessing that is truly making a difference in many lives. Again, not only in our children here at church, but in our community. Many, many kids and now adults have come back and are serving as leaders in our program. So when we say that we are training them to serve, our church is truly doing that because we have many of our leadership team, our children who were in our program here. So that is something to really praise God for. Okay, Ernie, you're up. I thought it was, uh, good, mor uh, good evening. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure to be a part of this church family and so blessed to have called this church home my entire life. And um, I just want to start by acknowledging God our Father and thanking him for Jesus Christ. And I just want to say how <clears throat> grateful I am for my Savior Jesus and there was a time in my life where I wasn't where I wanted to be, and, and now in the past few years, I've got, finally been getting to that point. I grew up in church. I, I started, um, my, we, we started early at the Calvary Baptist Church, and then we're, we merged over to the First Baptist. Pastor Tom, I was uh, baptized in the other First Baptist Church, and then we moved here. So I've been attending this church 
from the time that it started, although I wasn't here the entire time. Um, I, I grew up in Awana, so I understand the importance of scripture and having the scripture, these children learn it and, and uh, have, have it in their heart. It, that's something that has helped me throughout the time uh, that I was walking with and in, 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 in the darkness and away from God. And the scripture has always uh, been ingrained in my heart and that conviction that was put in me in Juana and, um, and growing up in church. So I understand uh, it's, it's so important. Our children are under attack, families under attack, and these programs are so important to get children in there and start them learning and start, the, start uh, this relationship with God and scriptures is so powerful. We, we, I mean, that's what Christ combated the enemy with. It's like he, he immediately went to scripture. And so that's the importance. I mean, that right there just shows us that that's one of our main weapons. And, and to have this being instilled in these little ones from that time, it's just, it's very, it's, it's, it's amazing to, to know that these scriptures are, are what they can combat. One of the only things we can combat the enemy with. But anyway, I've been, I've been attending this, this church and, and I grew up in Awana. I, I, I grew up with, I, I'm so thankful for that conviction that was placed in me because at the time that was, I was at the lowest depths in my life, I could always fall back on that. And even though that I was living in darkness and I could still feel that light, the scripture that was ingrained in me from the time that I was little. And, and even though you, you come to a point in your life where you're not certain of how everything's going, you know that there's still that base foundation there. And it's so important, so important. It's, so, it's been so wonderful working with these children and seeing it and not knowing when you're a child the importance of having that scripture in your heart and what it's going to do. But it truly changes you in a way that, that you, can't even, you, know, you can't even describe. It. It's like once you ingrain that into your heart, it's like, and that conviction, it will always follow you and it will always be there. And that's something that I've drawn back on. And um, I've just been, you know, it, it not, not only building friendships uh, with, within the church and, and seeing these children just, just grow. It, it's, been, it's been one of the greatest things in my life. See, I never got married and never had children. It's one of the, the things that I really wanted. But when I was walking away from the Lord, I never felt that um, I, I was... The, the man that, that God wanted that woman to be. So I, I kind of never got married. That's one thing that, that I, I, I never got married, never had children. So that's one thing I'd always wanted to work with children. So a couple of years ago when I did start working, it's, it's like been one of the most wonderful things of, of fulfillment deep down inside to see these children. When Chris is like, oh, what, I, I helped with vacation Bible school and to hear, oh, these children have come t to the Lord. That's just like, or in Awana, these people, these, these children have accepted Christ. One of the greatest feelings in my life. It's like, I, that's, that's just, that's just an amazing thing to see that happening. Um, Chris is, Chris is so wonderful. She's, it's been so wonderful working next to her and Jessica and Tom. Tom's great. It's like, this is, they're such amazing people and, and I'm so thankful for their friendships. Um, this has been, it's, it's just been a, a great, wonderful thing to see these children growing in, in Christ. Um, but again, I didn't, I, I was kind of confused as to whether this was like a testimony or to whether about myself or, or whether this was about just, um, and I should have, I should have clarified that prior, but, but anyway, <laughs> I was like, but, but for me, eventually, um, coming back and, and, um, and, and living away from that and coming back and seeing this and, and knowing the power, uh, uh, that, that scripture can have and, and being plugged into church, um, it's just it's just been amazing because no matter what even being out and living in the world and doing these things that conviction always stayed in my heart and no matter what it drew me back to Christ and right now this has been the most fulfilling time in my life seeing being in the ministry being in the ministry helping out and seeing these children um, and, and seeing them grow in Christ and knowing and praying for them because I think I believe one of the most important things that we can do is every day pray for our families pray for our mothers our fathers our children because the enemy wants he wants us he wants us so bad but we have to remain vigilant in prayer and and realize that there is a spiritual battle going on at all times and that we we can't let him win it's like ultimately god has already he he has already won but we're in battle daily and we have to remember that to claim claim our children and our families in the name of jesus christ not to give up to continue to continue to press forward and 
um, to realize that we are in a battle, and it's beautiful because ultimately we know, we know the end. We know what's going to happen, um, but we still have to remain vigilant and realize, hey, this is, you know, we, we are in battle. And, and the enemy will not have our children. He will not have our fathers. He will not have the mothers or our families. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will not have that. And um, like I said, it's been so wonderful to see these children and to uh, to be able to pray for them specifically and and claim them for Christ. And, and I think that that's something that we have to do daily and claim claim our families and claim these children for Christ and not give up. But I'm very, very, very thankful to Pastor Tom. I'm t- thankful to Pastor Rick. I'm so thankful for our church family, for all of our leaders, and for the again for the friendships that um, I've built here. It's just been a wonderful time. It has been a life-changing experience in the past couple of years to to go from to this this emptiness to to start in in Christ in God, and then to go through a dark time, and then to come back and see the fulfillment and feel like truly the, the fulfillment through God and and it's wonderful to know that we, yeah we're we're fighting right now and sometimes it feels like we're losing but ultimately we know that God our father is in control he will win um, and that we have to remain continue to pray continue to be um, to, to um, continue to claim our children for him let me see and so you know, Pastor Rick, I haven't even ju- on time. Like, how is this? Is that? Because <laughs> I have no clue if I've been up here for thirty seconds or five minutes. I when I when I told you, I was like, Pastor Rick, is this like a? I'll, I I'll come up there when you've gone too long. Because <laughs> I wasn't gonna start to like kind of cut it off right there. I was like, but anyway, but anyway, um, what? It, it, yeah, I just I just want to again thank this church, our church family. I just want to thank. All these people. And just say, remember to pray for them daily. Pastor Rick, for for Chris, for Pastor Nick, all of our our church family. uh, It's like we have to remain in prayer every single day. It's not and not let let off. We're not going to let up. We have to continue to claim our children um, and and to realize that that they're 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 our future. That's what that's what they're. That's what they're trying to tear down. That's what they're trying to. And again, I'm not. I don't mean to sound negative, but it's so important to daily to, to daily be in that in that prayer for them. Um, also, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's that's basically it. I just I just also want to um, say, women pray for your husbands daily. Men pray for your wives daily, and pray with your children. It's like don't don't. Don't become numb to that or just be like, oh, I'm not going to read my Bible today. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. I, I started reading my Bible daily. It's not two two or three or four or five or six days a week daily. That's life-changing. Right there, you want to get rid of anger. You want to get rid of those. And it seems like, oh, yeah, I'm going to read my Bible. But but realistically, that works. That is, that's something that has been absolutely life-changing. I cannot believe the difference. But I just want to say, pray, say, encourage you, men, women, Pray, 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 like open your Bible, spend that time together. It makes a huge difference, huge impact. But that's it. I just want I just want to say thank you. It's been amazing. I look forward to God willing being here for many years and, and continuing to do this. It's been one of the greatest, greatest times in my life to help with these children. It's brought a joy and a light to my life that it's just like it's it's wonderful. And I and I just I thank God for all of you for being in this church for being a part of of this congregation and being blessed with these wonderful pastors and these people. But I just want to say a quick prayer, if I could please, if we could just bow our heads. I just want to say, Almighty Father, thank you for for being holy. Thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. And we do not not step, dear God, we do not step lightly because we just thank you for, we're not worthy to be here, but in your name, Jesus Christ, we come. We come into the presence of our Holy Father, and we just thank you. Dear God, I pray that you would go through, your Holy Spirit, that you would touch every heart here. I pray for every man, and that he would um, be a good, firm foundation for his wife and his family. I pray for these women, dear God, that you would give them renewing every day and help them to know how special they are. I pray for these children, dear God, every single child here. 
I pray that you would be with them and that you would. We claim them for you, dear God. We pray against the enemy. We pray against any work. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everybody here that, that um, every plan that was, that was planned, that it be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray protection for this congregation, and I thank you so much for each and every one of them. Thank you for Pastor Rick and all of our pastors and our leaders. I pray that you would be with them, dear God, and also give them protection and renew them. Thank you for these programs. Thank you. I pray that uh, many children will continue to come to you, dear God. And be with, thank you for being with our leaders. And thank you for everything that you do for us. We pray these name, things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That was a great encouragement, Ernie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, more special music. Um, Rodney Stevens is going to come, and he's going to uh, sing a cappella, uh, God So Loved the World. Rodney, uh, right now, he's uh, serving as a deacon. He's head of our missions committee. He's been doing a great job getting us uh, acclimated and, and more familiar and informed on what's happening with our missionaries, and we see that in the Bolton now uh, just about every week, so we really encourage that. But before Rodney takes the stage... Just a couple more jokes for you. Two antennas met on a roof. They fell in love and they got married. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was excellent. I have a bumper sticker that says, honk if you think I'm handsome. And sometimes when I'm feeling down, I drive to the nearest green light and just sit there for several hours. <laughs> Last one, a little church bulletin humor. One church bulletin said, ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of those things uh, that you just don't want to keep around the house. Be sure to bring your husbands. <laughs> Rodney. God so loved the world, God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believeth, believeth in him, should not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believeth, believeth in him, should not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting, everlasting life. God so loved the world, God so loved the world. 
beautiful, Rodney. Thank you. Well, next up, um, we want to hear not just about the programs and events and ministries of our church, uh, but we also want to hear from our church family. And there's so many things that happen in our church family every year. It's, it's hard to keep track. Uh, it's amazing to think back. And as uh, we were having a staff meeting recently, uh, we were thinking about, you know, the Harvest Dinner, where, where we'd like to take it, what we'd like to emphasize in it. And uh, Pastor Nick, in particular, spoke up, and uh, this was the Sunday after our last business meeting, and he was just so overwhelmed with emotion and, and with um, so touched to see at that meeting both Richard uh, Klippenstein and Blair Bernard sitting together. Um, this was very soon after Joyce's passing. This year, uh, we've seen... Uh, a lot of loss. Uh, many of our church members, and I'm going to name them, uh, some that have been a, a little distant in recent memory, some that we've lost very recently. Uh, Florence Cotton, Lois Thiessen, Jack Mishler, Jeanette Holt, Sherry Bernard, uh, Missionary Vic LaBelle, Doris Thiessen, Betty Scroggins, Dolores Wade, Eileen Johnson, Tex Sheehan, Joyce Klippenstein, and Kent Draper. Kent's funeral is coming up this Saturday as well. At these times, it's important for us to remember each other, to lean on each other, to show that we're more than a collection of a bunch of programs and events and fun stuff, but we are a church family of brothers and sisters who love each other, who take care of each other, and who also want to hear from each other. Uh, so I asked Blair Bernard if he would be willing to share tonight, and he's not necessarily sharing just about losing Sherry, but the um, Lord's been working on his heart a lot in the last year especially, and uh, he's been gracious enough to come and, and share with us tonight. So, Blair, would you share? The Lord blessed me with a, a woman that I could only have dreamed of, you know. My life was empty, lonely, and, and I think Sherry's was too. And when he brought us together, he gave us 42 good years. We came to this church a period of time ago, and uh, quite a while, I don't even know how many years it's been now, but... If you don't know, and I'm sure you all do, you know, she, Sherry had a, she was diagnosed with cancer in, in February, I mean April, and um, it was not good news. Doctor said, this is not curable. He said, in the same voice, he said, but I have patients that I've been treating for many years. Sherry did not become one of those patients for very long. When she was first diagnosed, I thought, you know, I, my prayer was I didn't want to see her suffer. And we've all seen the suffering and cancer in this, in this church, in our friends. And my prayer was selfish, you know. But I asked God to spare Sherry not leave her here to suffer for me. And he gave me my heart's desire. You know, she had a good life for 10 months. She went very fast. But she, up to the last day, she was climbing the stairs with me, going to bed, and we went for just another treatment. I said, well, things don't look right, so we better get you to the emergency room, you know? So I thought, well, we're just gonna go to the emergency room and we're gonna be there for, she'll be there overnight. Maybe they'll put her into the hospital room and wasn't that way. One day you guys heard a prayer chain. Sherry's put in the emergency room. 
the next prayer chain the next day was Sherry's gone. Through that time, through her treatments, this church was a godsend to her. God was her strength. She drew closer to him each and every day. And um, this church was here for her when she was going through that. Her Bible study group, sending her poems, you know, writing her a poem for the day. Just different ways. People, she was rather shy. So it was hard to get to know her because she just, she was shy. When we first came to this church, she hated these round tables because <laughs> they could just be so, you know, defining. Where did you find, you know, as a new person, where did you find room? And that was something that she had problems with. But um, she was just a special person. But this church was here through that whole treatment. And then she passed. Then I was left alone. My church was here for me, lifting me up just in little ways, nothing real tremendous, just a word here and there. Just pat on the back, you know, how are you doing? You don't know what your, what your little things that God chose you to do actually help, you know. Richard's been going through this now with Joyce. And Sherry and Joyce were very close. It, uh, you don't know what, how much you're helping your fellow Christians. One thing I wanted to share was... Um, I kind of a stubborn, stubborn head, you know. Um, people that have worked with me know that it might take a few times to tell me how I'm wrong before I'll listen and, and take a different course, and maybe that is a good idea. And um, I could be that same way with God, unfortunately. And um, my wife, was a lot of times much sooner to listen to God's leading. When our first son was born, we had just bought a house and we were living the good life. And all of a sudden she looks at me and she says, I think uh, I'm supposed to stay home with the kids. And all I could see was this big house payment that we were making. And how am I going to do that, you know, without her income? And, uh, but I, Okay, as well, as we've got a little bit built up in savings. As long as we don't run out of money, I guess you'll stay home with the kids. She was home through their whole growing up. By the time that money ran out, there was other money. There was other whatever was left went farther. We learned how to make it work, but that was her. It wasn't me. She listened to God. Another time, she said, past pastor's been preaching on tithing, on giving the first tenth, first, I wasn't going to say that, the first, um, and I thought, no, I'm not, I was happy just whatever I have in my wallet, I'll, I'll give on a Sunday, you know, the last, and um, she said, you know, have, and I had been hearing the same sermons, but she was listening, okay. Well, well, we'll give it a try. And as soon as we started doing it, you know, the next thing that happened was um, the car breaks down. <laughs> All the reasons why you don't continue doing what you told God you would do. You know, everything, everything goes haywire. The kids get sick. The, and, um, but, you know, by the time, I don't know that we got more money. You can't outgive God, but whatever he, we had that left went farther and much farther. But um, anyway, uh, uh, 
this church family has meant everything to me. I wouldn't have made it through it. Um, just the little things. Just the little things. Lift up your fellow Christians. Lift them up and in prayer. In a kind word. We're all going through something. Keep your eyes open. God bless you. Thank you, Blair. Well, let's do just that before we continue and close in um, a song from Maddie Tuttle. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do lift up our brother Blair and many others, Lord, that in this season are feeling it perhaps in particularly um, raw ways, loss of a loved one, a difficult um, medical procedure, or just a difficult time in life. We know, Lord, that we can always thank you for many, many things, but you also welcome us to cry out to you, to do it together. So, Lord, we do that together uh, in prayer. Thank you for giving us a church family to encourage uh, and be encouraged by. And, Lord, we, we just cry out to you as your children. With the same breath we give thanks, and we also just say, Father, help us. We know that you love to help your children. In Jesus' name, we give to you uh, these prayers. Amen. Well, before uh, Maddie comes up and uh, closes us in a song tonight of gratitude to God, uh, one note, we have a lot of meat left over. We have, uh, Laura said, we have about 12 gallon size bags of turkey and about four or five, maybe six bags of ham. Uh, so if uh, after I close us in, uh, closing comments and prayer. Uh, if you would like to take one of those home with you, just ask for a small donation of maybe ten dollars to help recoup costs for tonight. And I think you can. Will Laura will be uh, out somewhere over there? Not sure where. Somewhere over there by the kitchen, uh, dishing those out. So first comes first serve for that. So. Uh, I was just asking Pastor Rick, did somebody tell you I was going to sing that song? Um, cause I, I was like, what? I didn't say anything. Um, but before I sing, um, it's funny because, you know, since I've started, you know, I was able to share music here. Uh, Pastor Tom actually asked me, we were talking about it at our table a few years ago. And I sang quite a few songs. And then what Pastor Rick has asked me a couple of times. And it's just neat the way that God, you know, works things. And they've always made it a point to say, you know, like you're up here to, to worship, you know, we're to work so we can worship together. So the songs that I've, you know, chosen have, uh, they haven't been songs that I've, you know, practiced forever and have been prepared. Um, and so this song, it, I, gratitude, um, we're not, sometimes I, I feel myself personally, and I'm sure some of you too, is that we don't always have things the way that we want them to be. And we're not always, you know, giving, I, I, I feel like I'm very hard on myself, especially with, you know, I, I'm a teacher and teaching first grade right now, and it's kind of crazy, and I'm like, I'm not giving these kids enough, but at the end of the day, or sometimes parents, you know, come with me, bring the kids, and, they're, and I, I kind of have that sigh of relief, like, oh, okay, I'm doing, I'm giving them what I, I have, like, what I feel is best right now, and, you know, in the end, like, it's all going to work out, and I feel like, especially with this song, you know, we may not always feel like, you know, I'm being the best that I can be, but God, this is what I have. And, you know, in this season especially, I think that there's a lot. We, we are shown that what we teach, you know, and what we, we show to others in gratitude and everything. Like it's, you know, it's something that is always can be reciprocated and something that I feel that we, we can always give that to God also. So I hope you guys enjoy. All my words fall short 
I've got nothing new. How can I express all my gratitude? I can sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hand and praise you again and again. And all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hand and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on. So, oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Throw up my hand and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you very much, Maddie. And thank you to everyone else who had a hand in tonight from people serving in the kitchen, uh, all of you bringing your own dishes as well, those who are up here uh, serving as well, thank you very much. This has been a great evening, amen? Amen, yeah.
Well, just one more uh, announcement again. There's my wife. So uh, go and, and tackle her if you want uh, one of those uh, uh, bags of either turkey or ham, $10 bag. And, and we have turkey broth, basically. Yeah, the tur- we had, there's a big... Okay, so 19 bags total. Then broth included if you'd like some. So I'm going to close us with just a very simple benediction this evening, uh, inviting God's blessing uh, not just on tonight, but on the rest of the year and and the year that's ahead of us now, uh, beginning not too long away. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight.